So everybody, I think I just found the best non-Apple Apple display that you can buy, and it's right behind me. Let's talk about it. So if you're an Apple fanatic or an Apple aficionado and you use Macs or iPads and you like to use external displays, then we all know that Apple makes some great displays in their own right. You know, they have the studio display, which is a 5K monitor, and then you also have the Pro Display XDR, which at this point is still $5,000, even though it is already at like three or four years old now at this point. But for that reason, the PPI and then also the 5K and the 6K variants of the studio display and the Pro Display XDR, that's what makes these displays so expensive. So when you go into the third party market and start to look for other displays that work well with Mac computers, I've been testing this BenQ DesignView PD3225U for the last couple weeks. And for my testing, this is definitely the best non-Apple display that you can get for Apple devices. And as you can see behind me, I'm using it with my new M4 iPad Pro and it works amazingly. So just to get some of the specs out of the way before we get into the real world use cases, you're dealing with a 32 inch LED backlit IPS panel with a pixel density of 3840 by 2160. So this is a true 4K panel and it does have those 400 nits of brightness. And as you can see from behind me, it's still plenty bright and I'm in a very well lit room with a bunch of windows behind this camera, bringing in a ton of natural light. And there really isn't any glare, if at all, with this actual monitor and, it's, and it does pass those tests for me from a brightness perspective. And then you have everything that you would want out of a design monitor, right? You have a 60 hertz display, a great contrast ratio of 2000 to one. It has a built-in display coating, which is anti-glare, which is why it looks so good behind me. You have the perfect color gamut of 98% of P3 gamut, 99%, and then 99% of the sRGB. You have a bunch of different color modes, especially the M-Book mode, which is the best when using it with a MacBook or an iPad Pro. And I will say up front that this display does cost $1099, so it isn't cheap for its own right. You can definitely find cheaper monitors out there, but for what you're getting, $1099 for a dedicated Mac display that is super color accurate and pretty much as close as you can get to that studio display, I think is a no-brainer. And now let's quickly talk about IO, because not only is this a beautiful display, but it's also pretty much a Thunderbolt hub behind it, right? So you do use a single cable solution for this. It comes with all the necessary cables that you would need, including a Thunderbolt cable, which I'm using right now to attach to my M4 iPad Pro. But you get two HDMI 2.0 ports, a 1.4 display port. You also get a Thunderbolt 3 port with power delivery of up to 85 watts, which is more than enough for any computer that you put in it. You do get a Thunderbolt 3 out for power delivery of 15 watts. You also get a USB Type-B upstream port, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what that's for. Leave a comment down below if you know what that's for. Another USB-C downstream port, and then three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and then an all-in-one connection, which is that Thunderbolt 3 port. So again, this is a Thunderbolt 3 hub that's already built in to the actual monitor itself. And if you look for Thunderbolt 3 hubs like CalDigit, which is, I think their Thunderbolt 3 hub is actually $300. So that's a $300 hub built right into the system. Another amazing thing about this monitor is the stand that it comes with. It's not only super rigid, well-made, and super high quality, but it's very malleable in terms of how you're able to adjust and move your actual display with no problem whatsoever, and you can basically move it all with just one finger because of how balanced and how well-made it is. So obviously, you can move it up and down, but you can also rotate the display a full 90 degrees, so if you do want to use it vertically, you can do that as well. And then, of course, you also have some tilt functionality to give you different angles, so if you have so if you are standing and you wanna have a different angle of the display, you are more than welcome to do so because it does support that with the stand. And then lastly, from my hardware perspective, there's two more things that I wanted to bring up. One is that you do have built-in speakers. Now, again, I'm not gonna be using these as reference speakers or anything like that. They're a little bit tinny. They do have a little bit of bass in there, but you are better off maybe using the actual speakers on the iPad Pro or a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. They're just there to maybe listen to an audiobook or listen to a podcast, just to know that, hey, you do have speakers built in there, which is nice because some monitors, even at this price point, don't even have speakers built in. And one of my favorite things about this monitor is the bezel situation. It's uniform bezels throughout, they're extremely thin, and you have a nice anti-glare coating on the screen, so no matter how bright the room is or how bright the situation is that you have this monitor in, you can pretty much see everything on the screen with no issues whatsoever. And that 400 nits of brightness does go over extremely well. It honestly looks like it could be six, seven, maybe 800 nits of brightness because of how bright and how well it does in these types of conditions. So if you're looking for a bright display that works in an area that has a bunch of windows and you have a ton of natural light, this is a great option. And you don't have to pay extra for an anti-glare coating. So I've been using this BenQ monitor primarily as a secondary display for both my MacBook Air, as well as mostly my M4 iPad Pro. I like to edit videos on here because it's very color accurate. I edit my thumbnails on here via my iPad Pro on the monitor itself. 
and it just works extremely well. I have no real complaints about it. For $1,100, it gets everything that I want. It checks off every box. Again, it is a beautiful monitor with 400 nits of brightness. It's 4K. It has great pixel density. It doesn't have that retina pixel density that Apple likes to tout at 218 pixels per inch, but it's still more than enough at that 4K level at 32 inches. It gives you plenty of screen real estate for no matter which operating system you're running. And also, as I said, it acts as my Thunderbolt hub as well. I have different things plugged in there. I even have my CalDigit hub plugged in directly to that monitor. So I have like, I'm like double hubbed up right now. So I have plenty of IO and plenty of ports. And what's surprising is that the M4 iPad Pro is handling all that with zero hiccups. I also use it in combination with the halo light on top that's not included in the packaging. I believe it's a separate purchase, which I'll link down below if you guys wanna check it out. But overall, I am extremely happy with the BenQ monitor. I've been using it for weeks now and I had the previous model as well, which I used for six months and I've had any issues with this monitor and it just works as it's intended. So if you are in the market for a brand new monitor and you do have a MacBook and you're contemplating maybe spending $1,600 on something like the studio display, Maybe save yourself 500 bucks, and maybe they are on sale at this point, but save yourself 500 bucks at least. Go with this display, see if you like it, see if it meets all your expectations, because in my opinion, I'd rather have a 32 inch monitor at 4K resolution than something a little bit smaller, like a 27 inch monitor at that 5K resolution. Sure, you get more pixel density, and sure you get a little bit more space, but I just like the bigger screen real estate. It does feel like it's more screen real estate, and when you are running it at that 4K resolution, you have plenty of room to have as many windows as you need up and have them all in one view. So let me know in the comment down below what you think of this monitor. Is this something that you would use with your setup? It works great with the MacBook Air, with the MacBook Pro, with Windows machines, with your iPad Pro as you can see behind me. So let me know in the comment if this is something that you would consider if you're on the market for a monitor like this one. And if I was in the market for a 4K 32 inch monitor that kind of met all my expectations, I would actually go towards this one versus spending the additional 500 to go with something like the studio display, especially because the studio display already at this point is a couple years old. Pro Display XDR is also a bunch of years old now at this point. So for now, I would just avoid those all together. But that'll do it for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these videos right here. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one. And if not, I picked this one for you right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, peace.